God bless you today. I just want to worship God today. Glory, hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we thank you in the mighty name of Yahushua Yamashia. Magnify your name and we thank you that we are alive today. Holy Ghost, I ask that you would release yourself. Burn every yoke. Burn up to the fullest every part of bondage in a person's mind, spirit, body, soul, and in their generation. I plead the blood of Yahushua against every demonic force, and I loose Holy Ghost fire to destroy everything that's not like God. In the Yeshua's name, amen. Now God's been tabling upon my heart different messages, but it's basically all under one theme. <clears throat> that theme is, are you running towards God or are you running away from God? We're going to get into the word in just a minute. I want you to think about that question. What's going on is the name of this message, people. Are you running towards God or are you running from God? There are single, unsaved, men and women, single, saved men and women that are either running towards God or running from God. There are unsaved married couples that are either running towards God or from God. There are saved, hear me clear, married couples reading the Bible, going to church, quoting scripture, that are either running towards God or away from God. It's either obey him or you're rebellious. What's going on, people? Proverbs 14, 34, righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Righteousness exalts a nation. Right standing with God creates growth in healthy relationships, healthy situations, healthy communities, healthy businesses, healthy circumstances. But sinful thinking, feeling, acting creates toxic relationships, toxic businesses, illegal things, toxic results, confusion, envy, strife, discord, all of those things because people refuse to obey God. And a lot of it's common sense. A lot of it's common sense. So I'm going to read some statistics from what's the big data.com dealing with the family and divorce rates. One statistic of what the big data.com says, white people, white couples, their divorce rate is 15.1. The Hispanic divorce rate, according to the statistics of what's the big data.com, is 18.5%. When it comes to black people and the black culture and community and black marriages, the divorce rate is double with the whites. It's 30.8%. I'll repeat that. These are known statistics. Numbers don't lie. God is omniscient. science. He's the author of all positive and proper science that is determined to fix a serious problem. God is a problem solver. He's my problem solver. He's your problem solver. And he's the answer to staying together as a married couple, being prepared as a single person, and to change the statistics of the divorce rate, especially in the black community. People, what's going on? Black people, 30.8%. Now there's a census, data from Stewart 
2020 says, according to a 2020 report and the National Women's Law Center and a 2020 market article, black women are more likely to be unmarried than any other race. I'll repeat that. <clears throat> According to a 2020 report by the National Women's Law Center and a 2020 Marketplace article, black women are more likely to be unmarried than any other woman of any race. There are more than 70% of unwed black women today. So righteousness exalts a nation. Evidently, somebody in the culture of the black culture has not been running towards God, but these 70% women, the majority, have been running away from God. Righteousness exalts a culture. God's right ways, right thinking, right feeling, right acting right obedience causes things to grow and heal when the opposite is done there is destruction confusion toxicity so right now there are 70 percent of unwed black single women that includes save and unsaved we're going to look at some of the causes why remember proverbs 14 34 says Righteousness exalts a nation. Sin is a reproach to any people. So what's going on? There's a serious problem that only God can fix. However, it cannot be fixed by God if people do not cooperate. A problem cannot be fixed by God when you and I do not cooperate. When we don't walk in righteousness, we can't be exalted. See, if you had a person <clears throat> who was walking around on a rainy day and could barely see, fell into a mud hole and got stuck, or like on Brookside, they had quicksand, quick mud. Everybody knew not to step in it. She would sink down slowly, but you would sink, suffocate, she can't breathe. And if they fell into a muddy hole and someone came and pulled them out, they are now exalted lifted up out of that mud hole. God is sending these messages to lift single, unsaved, and saved, and married, unsaved and saved people out of a demonic, sinful mud hole. He's here to exalt you. But you have to acknowledge there's a problem. Without any acknowledgement that you have a issue, you cannot get help. Example, when you go into a store and the sales clerk asks you, what do you need? If you say nothing, they can't help you. If you don't know where the shampoo is or, or the fruit or whatever item you're looking for, you don't know what aisle it is, you're too lazy to look at the signs up there and you want help with it, you can't get help unless you ask and acknowledge you need help. So that's the point. So some of the root causes of black women saved and unsaved being single is this. Okay, you have black men that only date outside the black race. That's one factor, but it's not the determining factor. It's a variable factor. Then you have black men that are already married, not looking for a spouse. <clears throat> then you have a lot of black men who are sodomites walking in the wicked ways of homosexuality. Then there's black men in prison, so they're not available to be wet. What's going on, people? Right standing with God exalts a community, a culture. Sin is a reproach, a rebellion is a reproach to any people. So those are some of the variables, but they're not the determining factor. Let's go back to Eve in Genesis 3, verse... 13 we'll start at 
Genesis chapter 3. Let's go back to the book. Genesis chapter 3. Let's see what it says here. And I'm going to start at verse 13. And it says, Then the Lord God said to the woman, said to Eve, what is this you have done? In other words, Eve, what's going on? The woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. Notice what Eve said. She shifted the blame to the serpent, which is called lack of accountability. Here is one major root cause why a lot of saved and unsaved black women are still single. You get gals refuse to be accountable. You don't want to claim your error and your lack of being prepared for marriage. In a few minutes, I'm going to give you an example of somebody I talked to today that exemplifies that to the T. But back to the scripture. So the Lord God said to the servant, because you have done this, cursed are you above all the livestock and above all the wild animals. You will crawl on your belly, eat the dust of the ground, and I will put enmity between you and the woman, conflict, and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head, talking about the Messiah, and you will strike his heel, talking about Calvary. To the woman he said, I will greatly increase your pains and childbearing. With pain you will give birth to children. That's why women experience labor pains. Your desire will be for your husband, in other words, you're going to be romantically attracted to your husband. And then he says, and he, your husband, will rule over you. Here's another root cause. There are many black, saved and unsaved, single women who are rebelling against God. They are refusing to submit to God's order which is righteousness that exalts a single save or unsaved black woman to be exalted for marriage. I'm going to let that sink in. God said in Genesis 3.18 that the man shall rule, dictate, have the final word and authority over a married wife. Not that he would rule like Hitler, but he would rule with God's wisdom, God's spirit, God's word, with the fruit of the spirit. See, that's the first provision. The first provision for a husband inside of a marriage is not money. Duh, 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 ding dong. It's not money. It's structure. It's right standing with God. It's order. Point in fact. When you single black women, save and unsaved, go to a job, how do you get your paycheck? Do you go inside that job and just get a paycheck? No, you follow the rules, you do what you're told, and at the end of that pay cycle, you get paid. You don't get the money first. They do orientation. They give you a handbook. Most companies show you where the fire exits are. They're showing structure. They're showing order first. Then you get compensated. Eve did not follow God's order. She purposely chose to disobey God. And then Adam allowed himself to be manipulated. And the great fall took place. However... The Messiah came and shed all of his blood to redeem mankind back to the Father. What's going on, people? The Messiah exalted righteousness. He destroyed the power of sin. But why are these statistics still saying white people's divorce rate is only 15.1%? Hispanics is only 18.5%. Blacks is 30.8. Just about, it's double the whites and almost double the Hispanics. If you add six more percent to that, or a little more, it's double. 
So it's just, it's definitely double the whites and almost doubles the Hispanics. And we're talking about how Satan was the snake that deceived Eve and Eve was willingly cooperative, submissive, and agreeable with Satan in the Garden of Eden. That sin passed down through spiritual and natural DNA. So therefore Eve purposely chose to disobey. And our choices, your choices, single, unsaved, and saved young lady. Married, saved, and unsaved young lady. Your choices change your human DNA. I'm going to read that statistic out of this book called Becoming More by Diana Kukowska on page 53. See, I don't want you to think I'm making this up. God bless you, Brother Trapper. It says, so it makes sense that you may feel stuck in the patterns of your parents or their parents and their parents. Generational curses. It also means that the choices you make today will not only affect you, but also shape future generations. In fact, research shows that your decisions, ladies, make changes to your DNA that will be passed down to your lineage. This book is called Becoming More by Diana. Her last name is K-O-K-O-S-Z-K-A. -K she's a bestseller and she's born again. So science has declared that DNA is changed through choice. Eve changed the DNA of every woman and man when she listened and obeyed Satan willingly. A lot of you women are still single, saved and unsaved, because somewhere you may be disobeying God. Not all of you. Some of you just need more preparation to be a wife, to understand the five basic needs of a man and the five basic needs of yourself. Now, I'm going to read you something that I went through today on Facebook. When anyone, thank you, my brother. God bless you, Travi. When anyone sends me a friend request, I always ask the question, what drew you to my Facebook page? And here's what this young lady wrote. Her name is Sam. And this is what she wrote. Hold on. Hold on, let's see here. Okay, I have to deal with that. Okay, and it says, let me go back to it. Here we go. I'm going to read, oops, da -da -da -da, if I can get it. Okay. All right, now I got it. Okay. I'm going to read what happened today. I said, hi, Sam. I hope all is well with you. What drew you to my Facebook page? Just passing by and wanted to say hi to you, but that wasn't the real reason. I'm new here and just trying to meet people is what she said. Okay, cool. So I accepted the friend request. Where are you from? One of the dumbest questions a person can ask on Facebook, where are you from? Duh. Read the person's profile. It shows, number one, you have poor research skills. Your critical thinking skills are poor. So why are these single, saved and unsaved women hunting a man when hunting is masculine, first of all, and trying to find a mate, and you can't even read somebody's profile that's right in front of you? That's real dumb. Let's go on. She read my profile. Wow, wow lovely. Nice meeting you. Hello. I asked her, what is your profession? What type of books do you read? I want to know how a person thinks because I'm not on Facebook for foolishness. I'm here to present God in different ways. Righteousness exalts a nation. Sin is a reproach to any people. What major goals are you working on right now? I'm a makeup artist. Okay. I love reading the Bible. Okay. Listen, 
I am seeking for someone loving, caring, God-fearing man to love and spend the rest of my life with. Poor thinking. Let me turn this music down or off. I want you all to hear this. I want you all to hear this. I'm going to read that again. I'm, I, I'm, she says she's seeking for someone loving, caring, honest, and God-fearing man to love and spend the rest of my life with. This is what I said. The Bible, not Michael, the Bible does not advocate a woman to look for a man. So you're not ready for any type of romantic relationship because you don't even understand God's order. That's number one. Eve stepped out of God's order in Genesis chapter 3. She purposely rebelled and listened to Satan. Appreciate you too, my brother. And then she says, whom? That's not what you think? Then she says, I know more and more than you think. Listen, go back to Genesis chapter 3. When the devil tempted Eve and said, Eve and said, does God da-da-da? In other words, the devil told Eve, girl, you know more than God. Come on and eat this fruit so you can be more enlightened and be above God. Walk in the pride that I'm giving you and the rebellion that I did when I got kicked out of heaven. I know more than God. So do you. It's the same demonic attitude. How is this young single woman ready for even a romantic relationship when she's number one hunting men are designed by god to hunt to conquer to go after to pursue that's a man's characteristic not a woman's then i said did you read my facebook profile yes i said i've been married for over 19 years am and i'm a married counselor oh okay i said yeah you don't know what you're talking about, and I do. You're out of order because God designed men to hunt and not women. You're on social media hunting for a man. Single, save and unsave young ladies, knock it off. You are not designed to hunt for a man when you're ready and allow God to prepare you for the right man, he'll send them. Save and unsaved, because God is in family. He loves family. I told her that's a masculine character trait. Women and wives are supposed to be feminine, gentle, and soft-toned. Even your response like, I know more than you think, Michael, is masculine. That's why I said, Sam, you're not ready for a romantic relationship. You know the last thing I told this young, single, ignorant woman? I said you need therapy. I told her she needs therapy because the scriptures declare in the multitude of counselors there is safety, there is character growth, there is healing. Hebrews chapter 12 declares that God trains, chastens, corrects the children whom he loves. Like a father corrects a child whom he loves. He trains, he corrects, he helps us to grow in our character according to Galatians 5, 22 to 26, the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, gentleness, meekness, faith. On and on. So for a single young lady, save and unsaved, and I'm going to say it, thank you, Holy Ghost, to be hunting for a man in voice or all the time, you single young ladies are wondering why you're still single. You're on Facebook showing your boobs, showing yourself in a bikini, showing yourself in a dress. Now, if you work for a modeling agency and you're displaying the clothes, 
that's proper. But if you're single and you think your body only is going to draw a good husband sent by God, the devil will send you one to jack you up, beat you upside the head, prostitute you, and wear you out. We're talking about a godly man coming your way. You're not going to find a man of moral fiber character that's going to come into your sphere of influence and date you and wed you. That's the flesh. 1 Peter 3, 1 through 6. Peter inspired by the Holy Ghost. I'm already ahead on my notes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Said, don't let it be the outward apparel, but let it be the inward, your spirit, your character of growth and allowing God to heal you of your daddy issues. Your, that rape that took place, and we know rape is wrong, that sexual abuse, all that anger, and all that, I think I'm, yeah, I'm no more than you, and you, I, and so if I can't get a man this way, I'm going to show my boobs on Facebook, I'm going to show my hips, and I'm going to show this, and I'm, why don't you show single men, ladies, what type of books do you read? When's the last time you went to a hospital and visited someone? When's the last time you give advice to a young girl not to twerk? What type of guy to date? What type of guy not to date? And even encourage her and her academics and allow God into her life. How many of you are doing that? No. <clears throat> You're too busy on Facebook showing your butt. For lack of better words. You know like that donkey with the ASS. You're showing your behind. And then when somebody comes to you. Sent by God. Trying to tell you what's correct. Yeah. <laughs> That's a demon of rebellion. And some of you are saved. Single. Read the Bible. Going to a church. I'm going to jump into it. Thank you Holy Ghost. With a woman pastor. That's an attitude, an act of rebellion. God is against female pastors because if you go over to the East, Africa, Iran, Israel, the ones that are leading the cattle and the goats and even Jamaica, they're not girls and women. They're males and men. Those are natural shepherds. The scriptures declare in Titus 1, verses 6 through 7, 1 Timothy 3, verses 2 through 5, the qualifications of a pastor in God's church, it is a M-A-N, and God has never changed it. Now, for you ladies that feel an anointing of leadership, you're probably called to be a teacher or in the ministry of helps or administration. Administrators still give instructions. Teachers still teach the word to break the word down. Don't let anyone get you confused and give you a pastor's license. I'm going to hit a real example of somebody close to my family who was already dealing with cancer a woman who's married and accepted a pastoral position and certificate from another man who thinks he's a pastor, but he's not. He's a psalmist, an anointed musician. As soon as she took that certificate, about a month after, the cancer is back and she's in the hospital right now. Out of order. Right standing, God's order exalts a person, a person's body. It keeps sickness away. She's in the hospital right now. The cancer has come back. Her feet are swollen. It's worse than it was before. Why? Righteousness exalts a nation. And listen, this individual was told when they got the certificate by my wife. I don't believe 
the man that lead, that's leading you is a pastor. In other words, uh, you have no business taking that certificate. Now, when she called here, and that conversation was going on. I don't know if the young lady remembers this. She should. And I'm not exalting myself. I never got on that conversation or on the phone and said, congratulations. I didn't say anything. What do you mean? The scriptures declare out of the mouth of two or three godly witnesses, let everything be established that God is pleased with it. My wife didn't give an approval. A godly, wise approval, a biblical amen was not given. She gave a gentle rebuke that the man that gave you that certificate is not called to be a pastor. So if he's not called to be a pastor, you're not called to be one either. She didn't listen. She did not listen. And her husband received the certificate. Nothing happened to him yet. Oh, and then again, something did. His wife is being reattacked by the devil through cancer because she's walking in disobedience. Righteousness exalts a nation. Sin is a reproach to any people. Matthew chapter four, uh, 7. And I'm all over these notes. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Matthew chapter 7. If you go down in those verses, the Messiah deals with those that hear my words and do them are like a person that built a house on a solid foundation. The winds of life come, the storms of life come, beat on that house, beat on that person, beat on that marriage, and the marriage lasts. The individual comes out on top, stays on top. But those that hear God's word and don't do it are like a house built on sand. The things of life beat against it. The storms of life come against it. And that house, that person, that body, that mind, that marriage, that ministry, that business falls apart because of disobedience to God. Obedience unto God exalts us in our lives, but disobedience brings us down Conscious committed sin brings a person down. Look at society today. I told you about those people in Six Flags in Atlanta, Georgia. The place just opened. Folk down there fighting, shooting, gang banging at a theme park. Out of their mind, just demonically possessed. So the point is, God's righteousness, obeying God, brings a person up. And now this individual's sick, and she's got a cousin who's in the word, a man of God, anointed. He has an anointing, a special anointing, to heal people with cancer. He called her the other day. He said these words. Y'all better listen. This thing is tight. He said, told my wife, matter of fact, it's her brother, Alan Paris. I'll say it. Alan said, I didn't get no word from God for so-and-so. So I'm just going to pray a regular prayer. Whoa, 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 whoa. This man, Alan Paris, has an anointing to destroy cancer. This individual who's walking in disobedience got a worse stage of cancer because of her disobedience, taking that pastoral certificate. And this man of God did not get a word for healing and deliverance? I'm not trying to be funny. That's scary. Do you know what that means? I said a marriage, God's righteousness is to bring growth and healing. The opposite of growth, people don't grow. The opposite of healing is sickness, and people check out. If they don't get healed, they, get, they check out. So, he said, I'm just going to pray regularly, and God showed you X, Y, Z. She had a vision of the individual and this, that, and the other. So you, you do most of the praying, sis, the brother and sister. The point is, 
God spoke to this individual. Don't take that pastorship. And I'm speaking from experience because back in the day, people would hear me, you know, talk about the word and where's your church? And I don't plan on having a church because that ain't God's plan for me. I am called to teach. And I tell people I have a prophetic slant. A prophetic slant meaning I warn people. I point them to the answer, which is God. I point them to the word. I point them to repentance. I, re I point them through, to healing and deliverance through the power of God, through the Holy Ghost, through the fire of God, through the power of Yahushua Yamashiach. Y'all call him Jesus. His real name is Yahushua. I point people in that direction because if you look in the Old Testament, that's what those prophets did. They advocated God's word. They advocated the way God thought. They advocated and talked about righteousness exalts a nation. When you obey God, everything's cool. When you don't, there's trouble. So now she's in some serious trouble. And the only way she's going to get out of that trouble is if she repents and renounces that role of pastorship. She's out of place. Just like Eve got out of place, and just like this young lady on Facebook with her mouthing off is out of place, I told her, you need therapy. And she does. Because in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. So to God be the glory. I dealt with the negative things that can happen because of DNA. I'm just going over my notes. Don't miss anything. Now, there's something else that the Holy Ghost dropped upon me. Uh, actually, my son and I were talking about it the other day, and it still deals with what's going on, people. Righteousness exalts a nation. Sin is a reproach to any people. And it deals with women that put extensions in their hair and women that wear wigs. You have to be careful where the source of that hair is coming from. I read an article, it's called The Truth About Raw Hair Vendors Won't Tell You. The Truth About Raw Hair Vendors Won't Tell You. Posted by Fahad, F-A-H-A-D, last name P-A-T-H-A-N, June 18th, 2024. This is what the article says. Still talking about righteousness exalts a nation. Your health needs to be exalted. Millions of Hindu women in India willingly sacrifice their hair at temples as a part of their religious beliefs. This practice ensures a steady and ethical supply of raw virgin hair. So they're virgins. The process is voluntarily and deeply rooted and cultural and religious practices, making it the most ethical source compared to other regions. Now listen, I'm going to read it again. Millions of Hindu women sacrifice their hair at Hindu demonic temples that don't exalt the righteousness or right standing of God. Some of you single and saved married women are wearing hair that is possessed by demons. You're wearing it on your head and you're wondering why you have problems. It's called an ungodly connection or ungodly soul tie in a natural form. Because if I was to take, I'm going to go back in a, in a second on something we did when I recently got saved. If I was to take the clothes off a man that just died and that man was a rapist, was a murderer, and a drug dealer. If I wore those clothes, my character and my mind would start thinking like that person. How many times have you seen a movie where an individual had a heart transplant by another person? And once they get the heart transplant 
and the heart matches their other organs, they start getting the thoughts of the individual whose heart they have. This is medically and scientifically proven, by the way. They start, because remember this book, Becoming More, page 53. Choices are passed down biologically through DNA. So items, point in fact, Acts 19, when it says Paul took handkerchiefs and aprons and those were used as point of contact to bring healing and deliverance. When the Messiah asks, who touched my garment and Mark chapter 5, because I felt power coming out of me. He said, who touched my clothes? Point of contact. I felt virtue go out of my body. And that's when the woman with the issue of blood confessed, it was me. I touched you. And the disciples were saying, everybody touched you, Jesus, Messiah. What do you mean? But that point of contact was godly. There's also demonic point of context. I give you an incident about a place. When I was working with the ministry, Christian Outreach on Dixwell Avenue, we had a tent. The tent had the uh, dispersed, <clears throat> the service. God spoke to me. There was a certain part near the door. He said, don't stand in that spot. Me like a hard-headed knucklehead, I stood in that spot, went home, and was tormented by a cussing demon three days straight. I prayed. I read Psalms 91. I read my Bible. I spoke in tongues, but off and on, that demon would sit on my ear and cuss and cuss, and I'm going, I'm rebuking it up. But my disobedience gave that spirit room. God allowed me to be tormented for three days off and on straight, and it would always happen when I least expected it. He finally lifted it. What are you saying? My disobedience did not exalt me to righteousness. It exalted me to torment. So I'm speaking from experience. Another incident. I was in Israel, single. And God told me to stay at the Y. I ain't staying no Y. I'm at the King Jerusalem Hotel, $64 a night, blah, blah, blah. Got to the airport, had ran out of money. Had to talk to some dude and... The devil was using his wife, Cliff, we ain't got no money, and Cliff pulled out a whole roll, which she didn't know about, gave me the $10, and I said, man, I'll pay you back, da, 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 da. He said, don't worry about it. But I'm talking about how my disobedience in the past exalted me to trouble. How a single young lady can walk around here and twerk, supposed to be saved, Dietrich Haddon and his lustful wife, that's, that's ridiculous. Don't follow society. Don't follow the media. Follow the word of God. So remember that being submissive ladies, cooperative and agreeable with God is the best way to go. Some of you are not in that category of rebellion. You just have to wait on God and keep trusting God to bring that right man. While you're wait, waiting, read 1 Peter 3, 1 through 6. If you're single and saved, or even unsaved, Read the Bible. Get some God in your life, especially in today's society. Lord have mercy. Gas station drama, and I'm, please. Walmart drama. We need God in this country like never before. So read 1 Peter 3, 1 through 6. Also, you can read Ephesians chapter 1, verses 17 and 18. These are scriptures on wisdom and insight. Colossians chapter 1 verses 9 through 13. You can also read the Proverbs for wisdom, the Psalms for strength. Again, that's the Proverbs for wisdom, the Psalms for strength. Proverbs 11 and 14 says, where no counsel is, where there's no godly advice, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, in the multitude 
of sound advice. When we obey it, as the Messiah said in Matthew 7, then the things in our life won't fall apart. So you can get a book called Ladies Save Single, Unsaved Single, Married, Save and Unsaved. Ladies, period. Whether you're single, married, save or unsaved. I admonish you to get this book. It's called A Woman After God's Own Heart by Elizabeth George. She's a best-selling author, a born-again woman who does not teach tradition. She teaches the word. There's also a book called Get Him and Keep Him by K-A-R-E-E-M-A-H, last name, E-M-O-R-D-I. She's also on Instagram. Now, there are some of you that are in churches, as God stated to me before, that have female pastors. You need to leave. Then there are some of you <clears throat> married, saved, single, saved, that are going to churches where that man of God is not living any type of righteous life. He may have even tried to sleep with you or slept with you. You need to leave. There, do, do you see what's happening to false teachers like T.D. Jakes, Kenneth Copeland, Creflo Dollar, <clears throat> Joel Osteen, Jesse DePlantis? God is exposing all of this dirt. Judgment must start at the house of God. Local communities, local fellowships, there are a lot of men, because they had a disagreement with their former pastor, started a church in pride, like Eve did, thinking, I'm gonna show them what's going on, people. I'm gonna show, I'm gonna show, I'm gonna show them I got it. I'm anointed that and are created a ball of confusion because they're not called by God. How can you tell if a pastor was sent by God? Number one, they're going to be a man. I told you, read Titus chapter 1, verses 6 through 7. Read 1 Timothy 3, 2 through 5. It doesn't mean the man's not going to make errors, but he won't be an open, blatant sin. His household will be peaceful. He'll have wisdom. Now, I'm going to give you a, what do they call it? A, um, a ditto. And I say this in love. If the man of God you're sitting under is not telling you what you've heard today, I would strongly consider leaving that fellowship. Because if he's not telling you what God had me speak once again, remember he had me to do four videos and stop acting like a witch for women under the control of a demonic force, Jezebel and Ahab, save and unsave women under that demonic control. I just read statistics about the black woman being the least likely to be married. 70% of black women are unwed today. There's a reason for that. It's called disobedience. Unrighteousness that brings down that part of the culture. It's not a man's fault. It's the woman's fault for not coming to God and getting delivered. Even some saved women that are married. I told you about the married woman who, who was rebellious against her husband and the ministry God gave her. She got sick and died. I told you about the other one who was in Christian outreach at one time. Accused her husband at the time of molesting their daughter. They got divorced. She was fooling around anyway. Married some dude doing taxes. He got in trouble with the taxes. That's red flag. Big flag number one. Second, she got cancer and died. She's not here. God is not playing with his order. So if you got a female pastor, and I told a brother before, the same one that went through that sexual accusation, that he needed to leave his fellowship because that pastor on Treadwell Street is a Latino woman out of order. Out of order. And also this point too, some of you young ladies that are saved and married and your prayer partners with somebody and you know the, the, the person you're dealing with, your sister you're dealing with, marriage going through a little rocky road, 
you never give them any type of sound counsel. Praying is fine, but giving count, sound, count, sound counsel is better as well. And the multitude of counselors speak life into that situation. How can you know an individual for 10, 20, 30 years, y'all praying together off and on, and you know the sister's out of line, single, saved, married, saved, and you never say nothing. You never bring a rebuke. Paul rebuked. The Messiah rebuked Peter. Look at it. He rebuked Herod. He rebuked the religious leaders all the time. Open rebuke, Proverbs 27 says, is better than secret love. You never bring a rebuke. Y'all having all this prayer, and God can rebuke one person in one area, but he never rebukes somebody who's rebellious, non-submissive, masculine acting, wife. You need to examine that. Open your mouth. Again, God is telling a lot of you, a lot of you, a lot of you, women come out of those churches where they're not exalting God like God wants them to. And some of you brothers too, putting up with a lot of nonsense in the home. And I dealt with that. The woman running her mouth and just on it, shut it down. Go in Luke chapter four, the Messiah shut that demon's mouth down. John chapter 2, the Messiah straightened out an unrighteous situation in the temple and drove out the money changers, the gamblers, and the animals. He drove them out. He stopped that activity. And, and, it said he made a whip. So do you think if a man got in the way of that whip that the Messiah pulled it back? No, he didn't. For you people trying to act like Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King wasn't God. It's ridiculous. I had a dream. Ba, 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 ba. Come on. That's not biblical. There were always, always were warriors in the Bible. And there still are. You're looking at one. You're one. So then there's another book you can get called His Need, Her Needs by Dr. Willa Harley Jr. And I just want to throw in real quick before my time goes, <clears throat> got about eight minutes. How I watched this man and his wife on a program, a gentleman, Christian program, a gentleman asked his wife a question. His wife, oh my God, talking about a godly woman. This is a white couple. Been ministering to marriages for years. She sat there with her beautiful spirit. You can just sense the gentleness, the submissiveness, the unity and respect she had for her husband. When that host of the show asked her a question, she said, well, I'm going to let my husband answer that. She pointed the authority to the right order, to the head, to the king. And if you guys, gals, don't want to look at none of those resources, watch the reruns of Good Times. I keep, God keep telling you. The way Flora respected James on good times is a perfect example of how a single woman is to be prepared for a husband and how a married wife, especially saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, reading the Bible, quoting the scripture, going to church and prayer meeting and yada, 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 is supposed to be submissive, cooperative, agreeable, soft, and gentle. Even Thelma, you didn't see her running around dating brothers. This is in Chicago they had made that show of, uh, uh, an example of. Chicago's rough. She went out there running around with every guy. She was in the house. Settled. Checked out her clothes back then. They weren't provocative. So the answer is repentance towards God, Heavenly Father. We thank you for souls being healed, set free, and delivered. If you're unsaved, Heavenly Father, save my soul. Destroy the yoke, remove every burden. If you're saved and find yourself guilty according to this video, Heavenly Father, forgive me. Mold and make me and prepare me to be the wife you call me to be. And if your wife out of line, Heavenly Father, help me to get in line and help me to keep my mouth shut. Help me to watch my attitude. 
Help me not to withhold sexual intimacy from my husband. Hello. Help me to be humble. I don't want to be like Eve and these other people that checked out early because of their disobedience. Because righteousness in God's eyesight exalts a nation. God's righteousness wants to exalt you. Wants to exalt our communities. And wants to build up families. And change that statistic of the divorce rate amongst black people being 30.8%. It's way too high. Take an example from the Northern European woman. Take an example from the Asian women. And take an example from some Latino woman who are quiet and meek in their spirit. And again, look at good times. Look at the reruns. Good times. It's right there. It's been there. We've been laughing, but there's some lessons how James had structure in that household as a father and a husband. How Flora agreed with the structure of her husband. You never see Flora fussing, shake, uh, shaking her head and rolling her eyes at her husband James on good times. What's going on, people? So there you have it. God loves you. I love you. Trying to warn you once again. Coming back with this same type of message. And remember... Take stock and inventory and history of where those extensions are coming from and those hair pieces, those wigs. The blood of the Lamb prevails. Yeshua's name. Amen.